What's the fact that could someday save my life? Serious. If you vomit and it looks like coffee grounds, you need to get to a hospital. You're bleeding somewhere and it's reaching your stomach the partially digested blood comes up looking like coffee grounds. If you ever almost drown to the point of throwing up water or passing out, even if you feel 100% fine, get to a hospital. Your lungs can unwittingly self fill up with fluid over the next few hours. Same goes for if you choke on something but clear your airway. Even if you feel fine, the trauma to the airway can cause swelling. In some, admittedly not very common, cases, your throat can close up. This is more common in children. Don't take the chance. If the blades on your lawnmower ever become jammed or need cleaning, sharpening or whatever, do not flip the lawnmower over and just start working on them. Moving the blades around triggers the same action as pulling the ripcord in simple motors. You can actually start the mower by rotating its blades from underneath. Instead, if you need to work on the mower remove the spark plug so that there is no chance of the gas igniting. Edit. Sentence structure. Jesus duck. How did I not die this way? I spent two summers being forced by my mom to cut the grass right after the rain. So I'd have to stop every 20 minutes or so to flip the mower and pull the chunks of wet grass out of the blades. I'm one lucky mother ducker to have never had had an incident with that. If someone is in trouble and you want to leap in to save them, make sure you have a way to get out yourself. I recently saw a video of a drowning man. Another man jumped in to try and save him. Instead both drowned. When having a heart attack, you don't swallow aspirin. You chew it. If you're ever somewhere really high, e, g, hiking, and you hear crunchy slash crinkling noises in the air and or feel static electricity, like your hair standing up, get the duck out of there immediately. Lightning is on its way. There's a creepy picture of two kids with their hair standing up smiling cause they didn't know what that meant, and immediately later they were struck by lightning. If you're stabbed slash impaled by something, for the love of all that is good, do not pull it out. Obviously this doesn't apply to splinters or other similar things, but too often you see people in movies get shot with an arrow in the leg, and the first thing they do is pull it out. If the arrow, or whatever the object is, has hit an artery or major vein, pulling it out could kill you in minutes. If the wound is serious enough to warrant a visit to the hospital, leave the object where it is. Secure it in place with gauze, or clean towels, shirts, etc. To help stop bleeding and prevent it from shifting in transit and just get to the hospital you don't have to pay money on any type of phone to call 911 so don't bother found link for change if it's a pay phone never pull out a gun or any weapon unless you are prepared to kill or die weapons escalate the situation to another level if you have a weapon intend to use it and risk having it used on you I read somewhere, if a stranger gets in your car and tells you to take them somewhere drive into something like a lamp post or anything, you won't be useful to them anymore because the car is damaged and you've drawn attention to them by crashing the car. You'll damage your car, but you'll have your life and your bank account. Someone at my college did this a few years ago. The guy told him to drive to the bank and withdraw all his money, so he drove into a lamp post and saved himself. If you're at the beach and the ocean suddenly recedes, get to high ground. Right now. If you ever get lost in the desert turn around and follow your footprints back to where you were. I know it seems common sense and stupid, but it has saved many a border patrol agent's asses. It is extremely difficult to hit a moving target. If somebody is trying to shoot you, keep moving. Change directions unexpectedly. Roll on the ground and get up again. Keep doing this until you are out of range and or can find safe cover. Edit it, gamers. If you're lost in the wilderness, go where water flows. Humanity has set up shop near water for millennia. If you get into a car accident or get hit by a car, even though you may feel okay, do not leave the scene or refuse care. You may have a head injury, whether it is a concussion or a sideral hematoma. You don't know. You need to get checked out. Trust me. Edit. Spelling. Learn to conquer your panic reflex. When it happens it doesn't matter what you've learned from this thread. If you panic. Panic crushes all thought. 
If you see the waters receding rapidly, and you think oh shit, a tsunami, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, or see a crocodile eyeing you up etc then panic. You won't know what to do simply because you cannot have rational thought. The best thing you can teach yourself for that moment when your heart stops, and you know you're ducked, is to not panic. 98% of all males who don't fight often throw a right hook when provoked. Edit. Fuck I understand that there are left handed people. Hitting a shark on the nose is not really the most effective way to beat it. Contrary popular belief. Hitting the eyes or gills will be more effective at scaring it and show that you are dangerous. Only hit the nose if you can't reach the other spots. Don't walk down the stairs with your hands in your pockets. Heart attacks do not always come with the classic symptoms. Especially if you are a woman or have diabetes. If anything weird is going on with your heart. Weird numbness in a part of your body, especially neck or arms. Extreme fatigue that won't go away with a nap. Dizziness. Etc. Comma. Go to a hospital now. If someone is having a seizure. Don't put something in their mouth. They can choke on it. Instead. Turn them on their side. And call 9. Double 1. Time how long the seizure lasts. And tell EMT if they hit their head or have a history of seizures. Allergic reactions sometimes have warning signs. If you get itchy or develop a rash after eating a food, using a product, or taking a medication, stay away from it. The next time you ingest it, you could have a full-blown reaction. There's a lot of research coming out linking exercise to reduced incidence of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Even if the exercise is started later in life. Start up a physical activity now, it's never too late. Not a thing down that dark alley is worth it. Rehypnol has a salty taste to it. Never assume that criminals are stupid, or that you can outsmart them. Actually now when I think about it, never assume that anyone is stupid, or that you can outsmart them. If your car ever drives into the water, immediately start rolling down the windows. If the car becomes submerged you most likely won't be able to open the windows anymore because of the water damage causing power loss. If you're in a car with manual windows, they might still work I'm not sure. You won't be able to open the doors due to the difference in pressure inside slash outside of the car and the pressure won't equalize until the car is full of water and a few moments after that. So chances are you'll drown before the pressure fully allows you to open the door and get out. If the windows are open from the start you can get out either through the window or opening the door. Also helpful to have one of those devices specifically designed for breaking a car window. In case you're unable to roll the window down due to being knocked unconscious by the impact of entering the water. Or just can't think clearly from panicking. They are cheap and can fit in the glove compartment. Do not delay getting out of a burning building. The flames are not what will kill you. The smoke will get very thick and toxic very quickly, and you will not be able to see the way to get out. Nothing in this world is worth delaying getting to safety. Not even your pets. Think of it this way. If you get out, you will be able to tell the firefighters that there are pets in the house and where they may find them. If you are unconscious in your house, the firefighters will not rescue your animals until you are taken care of. You may actually delay their rescue. To immediately stop a dog attack, dog attacking somebody else. Grasp the hind legs of the attacking dog very firmly, and pull straight up in the air, then walk backwards. Multiple pros of this. The dog can't keep moving to bite as it has no more thrusting power from its legs. The fright of being suddenly yanked up releases their grip. You cannot be bitten as you're firmly away from the jaws, and have control of the dog's movement. You can use this to drag the dog away to a place it can be restrained, so the attacked person slash child can be tended to, to release a bite, or to make the dog immediately release its next bite upon closing the jaws. Fold the lips slash jowls of the attacking dog under its own teeth. Upon biting down, it bites its own lips and you have a few seconds time to move the dog away. If the situation is absolutely dire, sharply jab a stick or finger nail into its ear. This causes immense pain and by yelping the grip is released. Make sure you have a backup plan to be out of range of the redirected aggression. Also note if this is your dog you've just jabbed, get it to a vet afterwards. It can cause serious damage. 
Bull breeds and mastiffs do not have locking jaws and never need their jaws broken to stop biting. This is a huge myth that even vets like to spread as truth and will severely injure or kill the dog. Maybe not to save your life, but will save a child's. A gun is always loaded, especially when it isn't. If you are driving and a deer crosses the road in front of you, slow down or stop. Deer generally travel in herds and there will more than likely be more behind the first deer. Edit, I'm not talking about if you are going to hit the deer. I'm talking about if you see a deer ahead that gets across the road safely before your car. There are more than likely more coming behind it. So slow down. Maybe not your life. But I read on here the other day that a bull bouncing onto the road is often followed by a small child. So yeah. Break when you see the bull. About 400 people a year die in the U. S. From unintentional carbon monoxide poisoning. Buy a carbon monoxide detector to go with the smoke alarm in your house. Also, know the symptoms. I've had carbon monoxide poisoning and very nearly didn't make it. It started out with a queasy stomach. Felt like I'd just gotten off a roller coaster. It seemed like if I could just sit still for a bit and eat some crackers it would be fine. But it wouldn't calm down. Then comes the headache. Oh god. The headache. Genuinely the sensation of someone taking an axe and splitting my head in two. I've had migraines that were less bad. The upset stomach worsened and I couldn't keep anything down. Anything was vomiting bile. Then my heartbeat became irregular. Rapid pounding then slow beats. Toward the end. I was just incredibly fuzzy headed. I couldn't understand what people were telling me. Someone told me dinner was ready downstairs, and I just couldn't figure out how a person gets from one room to another. I just couldn't reason anything out. This happened over the course of about two days. I had symptoms, because I stayed in a place that was full of carbon monoxide. The leak had been very small, and filled the house slowly. So the people who lived there didn't experience any symptoms at all. Their bodies just adjusted. If someone comes to your house and gets incredibly sick, open all your ducking windows and GTFO. If you get the wind knocked out of you, press your finger in that little crook below your throat, where your collarbones meet above your ribs. It will open the airway. I'm not sure if you would die without this procedure, but the panic of not being able to breathe will subside. Be aware of your surroundings and plan exit strategies. Not only is it a good way to fight boredom, but in an emergency it could save you precious seconds and help you get out or get away. Stay alert while your plane is taking off or landing. This is when the majority of plane crashes happen. Edit, since people keep asking. You should stay alert because that way you are more prepared. You'll see things as they happen and be able to quickly evaluate the situation and take action. If you're looking down at your phone or trying to take a nap immediately, etc. You're not paying attention to what's going on. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Get your bearings so you don't die. Cat urine can have a very high concentration if ammonia in it. So never use a bleach based cleaner or straight bleach to clean a litter box. Bleach mixed with ammonia equals death. Like mustard gas pain filled death. Trains move faster than you think. And if you are hit by one you will suffer the most serious damage. If you plan a long boat trip, pack vitamin C and fresh fruit. Scurvy still kills people. Quite quickly, people get halfway across an ocean and suddenly fall deathly ill and don't realize why. If someone ever stuffs you into the trunk of their car, kick out the tail lights and wave an arm out. Everyone behind the guy will see you. Edit, I have not watched the call nor psyche. Actually, this info was sent around years ago as part of a list of safety tips. Like, early 2000s. In an aircraft emergency, during evacuation, climb over your seat then swim across the tops of the seats if the aisle is clogged with panicking passengers. Edit, source, pilot in training. This tip was given to me by another pilot while doing a tour of a flight attendant training center, along with how to properly use the emergency exit, how to go down the slide, how to deal with an emergency in general and how to take out a terrorist. If someone seems to be choking but they are coughing, they are not choking. If they can't cough, they are choking. 
If someone is trying to rob you, give them everything you have. That shit is replaceable. You are not. Don't try to be a hero. Don't throw buckets of water on a house fire until you have turned off the power leading to the house. Amidst the fire and panic, you won't be able to determine the source of the fire, and if it is an electrical one, faulty wiring, dust build up, you risk electrocuting yourself, then burning. If you are lost somewhere, and it's just desert like outside hardly any water and you need liquid, never drink from still water. Always go for running water as it has a fresh source. Police learn in their training that if you ever lose sight of a vehicle you are chasing, turn right. Suspects always turn right, so turn left. Please subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more of Reddit Universe.